Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And in this video, I'm continuing my series on messaging. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking about message IDs and how you can use them for handling concurrency. All right, so message IDs. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create um, a simple event here. That's what I'm going to use as an example. I'm kind of continuing some of my other examples. I'm going to be using an inventory adjusted event. So if you've seen the other videos, it's going to look fairly similar where I've already talked about kind of defining a name or a type, which we're going to call inventory adjusted. And let's give it a version since I mentioned that as well. And we'll just call this 1.0.0. In our actual event data, We'll just say we have a SKU, call it ABC123, and let's give it a quantity of 10. So we're doing an inventory adjustment of, um, you know, I mean, of this particular product for 10. So message IDs. <clears throat> well, this is actually pretty simple, really, and really all I'm saying is to add some identification, some unique identification of what um, your message is. So I'm just gonna copy and paste some GUID that I pulled off the internet here, generated one. So it's just some ID, some UUID, some GUID, something that you're gonna use that's that's unique um, per instance of the message that you create. So the ID here being is when you're generating this actual event is when you wanna create this ID. You do not want some intermediary here, like something in the process of publishing the event populate it for you, you want to generate this message ID and you want to use something unique. All right, so now that we have this ID, how can we just use this and as a way to deal with concurrency? So if we're talking about messaging, most message brokers, queues, whatever your uh, service bus, no matter what you're using, most of them in most scenarios will define them as at least once messaging, meaning that they will deliver a message at least once. That means that you could get that message delivered more than once. And do you want to process the same message twice? Probably not likely. Or what happens if messages with the same message IDs get published to um, different processes um, at the exact same time? How do you want to deal with that concurrency? So we can do that actually pretty simply just by having that messaging uh, message ID. So what I'm gonna do is show you just a, an example of some handler that's gonna deal with our inventory adjusted. So say we have this, um, this type called the inventory adjusted, adjusted. Here's our message. Well, whatever action we're performing in terms of modifying state, if we can use, um, say it's a relational database, this is the example I'm gonna use, if we can use a relational database alongside um, what, of what we're changing our state of handling that concurrency and using that um, kind of database or data store, whatever model you're using, um, with its built-in kind of transactions, unique constraints to handle this, and we can make that all big one atomic operation. So what I mean by that is if we're talking about a relational database, I could just simply have some transaction that I create here, right? So we begin some transaction. And at this point, we could do something like insert into our event concurrency table. And our event concurrency table may have something like a column called the handler and a message ID. Now the handler is the what's um, handling this particular event because events may be handled by multiple parties, by multiple handlers. So we want to make this distinct, our uniqueness, per message per particular handler. So in this case, we can say we got a handler here and a message. This is going to be our handler, so we call this inventory adjusted count. Maybe that's our handler. We're updating our inventory count, some static number. And for our message ID, we're going to use the message. Dot, uh, we'll call this message ID. All right. So to actually update our state, we're going to be doing our normal, say, let's just say this is some update statement. 
inventory counts set quantity equals quantity plus we'll call it QTY where skew equals skew and our parameters here are going to be the quantity so the message dot event dot quantity and the message dot event dot uh, skew and then ultimately what we can do is just commit our transaction so this is just some kind of pseudocode here but really what it's showing is that you're making both statements you're you're dealing with concurrency um, in the inventory counts and the reason why this works is that if we have a unique key in our database on these particular two columns in our first scenario let's say we have a request come in it by itself it inserts here it updates the inventory count it commits and this record is unique so it's good let's say a couple minutes later the exact same message comes in for whatever reason maybe there was a timeout we didn't uh, let the message broker know that we process that event it would ultimately comes back in it runs to this statement and this bombs because our database is going to uh, throw an exception here saying that we hit a unique con uh, key constraint so we're good and the same thing if we deal with this at the exact same moments where we have multiple threads or multiple processes that run these at the exact same time and they both pass because they're in within their own transaction only one of those is actually going to succeed with a transaction commit, right? Our database is taking care of that unique key for us. So again, if you can keep something um, like whatever you're changing state in the database alongside uh, how to deal with concurrency in that same kind of fashion with some transaction, some atomic operation, that's how you can kind of use IDs um, to deal with concurrency. Now, one last thing to note here is that I'm using events again as the example. And that's why I included this handler or part of the, the column that contains the unique key. Because again, events have multiple, um, I mean handlers, there's multiple things that will handle an event. If you're using this same approach with commands, you wouldn't need this at all. You would simply just have a message ID um, because you're only ever gonna be having one handler that's gonna process a command, right? So again, you can use the exact same motive of having using the database transactions one atomic operation within that transaction but you wouldn't need something like a handler nor would you want it because you only want to actually process a command once but with events you want one handler to process the event um, only once all right so that's it for this post on messaging and for how to deal with concurrency Again, this post and this video is a part of a whole series I have related to messaging. I'll have the links in the description that kind of go over the overview as well as things that I've already covered like uh, versioning and naming. So again, those links will be in the description to the other videos and to the blog posts. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.